Christ is risen. The The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. 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 Good morning and happy Easter. At this time, we invite children of all ages, birth through the young at heart, uh, to gather in the chapel for Kids Church. Simply follow Miss Effie down the aisle into the chapel. There will be an Easter egg hunt, the flowering of the cross, and a message just for kids. If you're in the balconies, we won't leave you behind. Uh, Come on down, join us. It's going to be a lot of fun. Jesus said, let the children come to me and do not hold them back.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we, who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection, may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, <coughs> preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was within him, with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were, who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I hand it on to you as of first importance, which I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he is buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there's the place they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And so they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, and kindle the resurrection fire that is in us. Take our lips and speak through them. Take our hearts and see through them. Take our souls and set them on fire. Amen. Oh, it's a great day. <laughs> It's a great day. Let's take a page out of presiding Bishop Michael Curry's book and take a moment just to say to the person sitting next to you, it's a great day. See how friendly these Episcopalians are? <laughs> it really is a great day. This is the day to be here. This is the day when we pull out all the stops. We have the choir in full voice. We have brass and timpani. The clergy is all dressed up for the occasion. The flowers are perfectly arranged. The gardens have been planted. The altar guild has laid in extra wine and communion wafers. The ushers and greeters are at their most warmly welcoming. This really is a great day. Yet, in the midst of this joyous celebration, I hesitate to admit there's something I, I feel like I must confess. And no, this won't be on the front page of tomorrow's New York Post. But I think it's an important place to start. I need to tell you that I've lived a good deal of my life being afraid. Afraid. And maybe I'm not the only one here this morning who struggled with this. As I reflect upon my life, I have to say that fear has played an outsized role in it. And yes, I've had a wonderful life, a most 
privileged one. But it's often been dogged by fear. When I was very young, I was deeply afraid of these terrible nightmares that would come to me in my sleep. And later I was afraid of a group of boys who bullied me at school. And later I was afraid I just wasn't good enough as a human being. And then later still, I was afraid to be honest about who I was and what I believed and what I really wanted in life because I was so afraid of disappointing people. I suppose a therapist would say I was afraid of disappointing my parents. But ultimately, I think I was afraid of disappointing God. And then I struggled with fearing failure. And this fear, I'm sorry to say, seems to be part and parcel of the human condition. And as we grow older, we simply fear different things. We fear losing our physical and mental capabilities. We fear losing control over our lives. In the end, we fear our eventual death. We may be as united by our fears as we are by our faith. Because everyone, everyone is afraid of something. And the fear is not to be underestimated. It can be breathtaking. It can paralyze you. It can dominate and overwhelm every other single thing in your life. And as I live my life and observe other people living their lives, it seems that fear is damn near running the world. Politicians who can exploit our fears are amazingly successful. And the consumer industrial complex, which I define as all the businesses devoted to discovering our fears and then catering to them, Well, the consumer industrial complex just grows and grows and grows. Whatever you're afraid of, they've got something for that. And the bad news, it will cost you dearly. But what if? What if? What if there's something that will turn these fears into some kind of reasonable assurance? What if something exists that can transform our terrors into genuine hope? In 1956, the year I was born, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., speaking less than four miles from this exact spot, at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine, said, Good Friday may occupy the throne for a day, but ultimately it must give way to the triumph of Easter. Evil may so shape events that Caesar will occupy a palace and Christ a cross, But one day that same Christ will arise and split history into A.D. and B.C. so that even the life of Caesar must be dated by Christ's name. Dr. King knew his history. The triumph of Easter, as the Reverend Dr. King called it, is what we have come to proclaim here today. The triumph of Easter is that while our fears may inhabit us, they can never finally possess us. The author of the Gospel according to Mark wrote, as the women entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed, You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. He is not here. It's the simplest grammatical fragment imaginable. 
the strange angel named it. Jesus conquers his own death and rises from the grave. And this is the important part. In so rising, he brings all of us into eternal life as well. And this, this is the real miracle of Easter. This is what can lay our fears finally to rest. Like the great 18th century preacher Phillips Brooks wrote, let every man and woman count himself immortal. Let everyone catch the revelation of Jesus in his resurrection. Let them say not merely, Christ is risen, but I shall rise. Yes, I shall rise. I shall rise with Christ to overcome my fears. I shall rise with Christ into a new reality, into a new, less anxious life, a new beginning in the resurrection. That is a possibility given to me and to all of us. You and I shall rise with Christ to work towards building a better world. You and I shall rise with Christ to work for peace and justice wherever we find conflict and injustice. And it appears we won't have to look too far to find it. You and I will rise with Christ and all the things that vex us, all the things that we worry about, all the things we're so anxious about, will find resolution. C.S. Lewis said, I believe in Christianity as I believe in the sun. Not because I see it, but because by it I see everything else. Christians see all life through their faith and through the lens of the triumph of the resurrection. Now, the Gospel according to Mark has the briefest account of the resurrection found in any of the four Gospels. It ends very abruptly. Biblical scholars believe the very last line of the original Gospel according to Mark was this. So they went out and fled from the tomb for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Terror and amazement and fear, the most human responses to a godly act, but not a particularly edifying ending for the faithful. Later, Christians sought to amend that stark ending to give it a more positive conclusion, and most Bibles contain Mark's additional shorter and longer endings in parentheses. I don't know why we don't realize that it's the real stuff and the scary stuff that captures people. In part, it's the lack of a neat, happy ending at the end of Mark which makes it so compelling to me, so real. A colleague of mine once said that he thought churches would be full of young people if we told the truth more often. When I asked him what he meant by that, he said, if we just openly admitted we didn't know or comprehend everything, church would be more captivating. If we honestly spoke about our real fears, our real dreams, our real failures in church, then people couldn't wait to get through the doors. It pushes us, this story of the risen Christ. It really is a strange and surreal tale. And yet we fill our churches when we tell the strangest truths. This church is filled at Christmas when we proclaim that God was born to a, a young girl and became both fully God and fully man in the form of an infant. And we filled the church again today when we proclaim 
Christ was crucified, dead and buried, and then rose again on the third day. Amazing. Amazing. Reminds me of the small boy who was sent to Sunday school on the day when the class was learning the story of Moses and the crossing of the Red Sea. The little boy listened very carefully as the teacher spoke of how the Hebrews fled Egypt, surrounded by a great wall of water, and how that wall of water finally collapsed on the Egyptian army who had been in pursuit of Moses and his people. When the boy arrived home, his parents asked him what he had learned in Sunday school, and so he began to retell the story. Well, you see, Moses was the general of a huge army, and he was trying to get his army out of Egypt. So when they came to the sea, he had his corps of engineers build a huge bridge, and he moved all of his tanks and soldiers and equipment across the bridge just as fast as he could, and then he saw the Egyptian army was right behind them. So he got on the radio, and he called up his air force. And just as soon as the Egyptians got onto the bridge chasing the Hebrews, Moses had his planes bomb all the Egyptians into smithereens. And his parents looked at him incredulously and asked, is that really what they taught you in Sunday school this morning? The boy looked at them like he was taking them into his confidence and whispered, Mom, Dad, if I told you what they told me, you would never believe it. (laughs) The story we tell today must be believed to be seen. The Christian faith outlandishly proclaims that death, the final enemy, that greatest of fears, is overcome by Christ's death and resurrection. The late Bishop Warren Chandler, after whom the Chandler School of Theology in Atlanta is named, was dying at home in his bed. And a lifelong friend who was sitting beside his bed, holding the bishop's hand, leaned over and asked him how he felt. Tell me honestly, Warren, do you worry about crossing the river of death? And Bishop Chandler turned his head and replied, Why? My Father in heaven owns the land on both sides of the river. Why should I be afraid? Why should I be afraid? Why should any of us worry? It's a great day. Why should we be anxious? Christ is risen. Why should we be afraid? Christ will come again. Why should we be afraid? Christ is risen risen. Amen. Please stand and join in affirming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 9. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is.
risen Christ. Bursting from the tomb, we yearn for the joy you bring. Burst into our lives and lift our hearts with resurrection joy as we pray. Guide us through all uncertainty and fear. The first witnesses to your resurrection also were uncertain and afraid. Calm us as you calmed them. Risen Christ, Hear our prayer. by defeating death, you have freed us from the grip of sin. Release our nation and its leaders from bigotry, avarice, and every sinful way. Risen Christ, Hear our prayer. the bright light of Easter promises a new day to those in pain. Shine its warm rays on all the sick and suffering, including Liz Marr, Jack Hakenyos, Victoria Dove, Catherine Princess of Wales, Jane Roth, the Nash family, Emily Vogus and her twins, Henry Mackenzie, Viola Cleo Bradshaw, John Pepper, Richard Bell, Jim, Mama Silla, Marina Martinez, Michael Collins, Kathy Cahan, Robert Cahan, Peggy Henning, Andrew Pick, Aida, Lucy Merriman, and those we now name. Risen Christ. In rising from the grave, you have raised us too. Receive all who have died into the glory of heaven, including Loretta Ward, John Keeger, Michelle Moore, Joyce Harms, Betty Logan, Dan Longo, Jean Cornet, Sarah Nash, Ashley Wareham, Wolfgang Ellert, Clayton Kewell, and those we now name. Risen Christ. Our prayer. Easter is good news. Fill us with gladness and thanksgiving for the miracle of your resurrection and for all the blessings of our lives, including all of the volunteers, musicians, and staff who make our Easter celebrations possible, and those we now name. Help us as we seek to share our joy with others. Strengthen us as your church to proclaim faith in the midst of doubt and hope in the midst of despair. Risen Christ. Hear our prayer. Risen Christ, our living Lord, you elude all our expectations. We assume that we will find you dead in a tomb and learn instead that you are on the way to Galilee, amazingly alive. Open our minds to confounding truths and perplexing possibilities, and as we shake free of our fear, grant us the faith to follow you into new and different life. In your name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's share a sign of God's peace with one another.
Well, happy Easter. And welcome to St. Bartholomew's Church in the city of New York. We are so glad you're here. I'm Dean Wolf, I'm the rector, and on behalf of uh, the staff, the congregation, our vestry, welcome. We're just really happy you're here. Um, if you're um, uh, visiting with us and would like, we'd love for you to fill out one of the Connects cards so we can follow you all around wherever you go. <laughs> no, really, it would be nice for us to be able to send emails and things, and if you'd like those and be in contact in that way with us, fill out one of those cards. You can also go to the website and fill it out there. Um, I'm reminded that we have to welcome all the people who um, in this post-COVID era are not with us uh, in person but are watching from around the world. We have people in China, we have people across the United States in Ohio and Texas and California. Uh, we have folks in New Zealand, the UK, uh, and it's great to welcome all of you online as well. Visitors and regulars alike are invited to take a tour of our National Landmark Church after the service. One of the docents will meet you in the back of the church by the tour sign. This Tuesday, April 2nd at 7 p.m., we begin a new series on Zoom uh, entitled The Music of the Easter Season. The Reverend Zach Nain will lead off um, that class by exploring the exalted, the Easter proclamation chanted at the beginning of the Great Easter Vigil. On April 6th, in our Saturday mornings at St. Bart's program, they'll begin a discussion of Reading Genesis, the book by Marilyn Robinson. To find out more about all the things that we're doing, opportunities for prayer, reflection, uh, opportunities for service and growth, um, take a look at the e-news, uh, visit stbarts.org, or pick, out, uh, pick up one of these cards. Um, they do this you know, for people like me who can't figure out all of those other electronic uh, ways of being in touch. So, uh, uh, Although, there's a QR code which just flummoxes me, but... <laughs> um, gosh, we are blessed to have all of you here today. This church is really founded on the, the premise that, that we're not here to serve ourselves, but to serve others. David Hummel Greer, one of the great rectors of St. Bart's back in the day, put a sign out in front. It was kind of a new concept at the time. The sign said, strangers welcome. To this day, we are welcoming strangers and people from around the world uh, to our doors, uh, looking for food, looking for shelter, looking for sustenance. Uh, the Crossroads Community Services Program feeds some 5,000 meals, um, 5,000 meals a week are served um, uh, from the undercroft of this church. I invite you to give uh, generously to support all of these ministries, the ministries of preaching, teaching, and the ministries of care and service for others. Walk in love as Christ has loved us and has given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice.
The Lord's Supper, the Mass, Holy Communion, is open to all who desire the sacraments of the Church. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. So We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him 
and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.